Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, this is your host Ram, welcoming you once again to this Cricket Happening show as usual. Well, uh, today we are going to look at the uh, second day's play uh, in the first test match between England and India, where England, as expected, have been struggling against the spin. Already they are having their problems, they are faced with a huge uh, score uh, as far as in India were concerned, because India put up more than 500 on the board, which I will be talking about. And then we will look at the uh, final day's play coming up in the Bangladesh West Indies test. And probably, uh, I mean, uh, it's very too early to say because West Indies right now are 244 for 6. Bangladesh actually went on to their highest ever total uh, in test cricket, as I was telling you yesterday. And they took a 29 run lead. And, uh, you know, the match uh, absolutely uh, became livened up uh, due to the spinners coming in and uh, disturbing five wickets of West Indies in quick succession. And that's what um, um, made uh, the Bangladesh take the honours on the on the fourth day. And the fifth day is going to be interesting because uh, West Indies right now are 215 on. Uh, and well, tomorrow is the last day and the last day a pitch can really, really be troublesome because there will be a lot of footmarks, there will be the spinners could play some uh, real havoc according to me. Well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off from the England game. As you know, India actually uh, resumed at the overnight uh, score. Uh, on a very, very, very good score of 323 for 4. We had Cheteshwar Pujara, but Cheteshwar Pujara, not only did he get to a century, which I was talking about, a second century, it became a double century. He converted into a double century. Uh, he was there in that very, very good partnership with Virat Kohli. In fact, uh, uh, England were given no respite because 283 for 4 when Kohli departed uh, the previous day, uh, this score uh, still uh, assumed great proportions, uh, taking the score on to 100 and um, uh, and, uh, 413 uh, with Yuvraj Singh also chiming in with 74 on his comeback. Uh, he hit some very good six. In fact, in the morning, uh, he hit a very, very good six of Graham Swan over the stands. And uh, in all, he contributed 74 with six fours and two sixes. And what a confidence that would have brought for Yuvraj Singh, who has uh, battled cancer and then came into the one-day scheme of things and now comes into the test matches and has really proved himself. As far as uh, Chateshwar Pujara was concerned, Chateshwar Pujara, well, he went on in his merry way. And as I said, mm, well, it is too early to say whether uh, he's the right replacement for Rahul Dravid because we definitely need to see Chateshwar Pujara uh, on wickets abroad, how he faces against uh, in England, how he does against Australia, South Africa. It's too early to say, but I thought this, uh, this knock would go a long way for Chateshwar Pujara uh, in actually cementing his place in this Indian lineup. Now, Chateshwar Pujara was an, had an unbeaten 206 to his name with 21 fours and it was a very, very well crafted out innings and he was there and Yuvraj Singh uh, was, um, uh, he, after making 74, he was a victim of Samit Patel uh, but uh, as I said, Yuvraj Singh played very well but uh, the other uh, batsman couldn't really do much, MS Dhoni uh, was uh, clean bowled uh, round his legs by Graham Swan for 5, Ashwin contributed 23 uh, to two fours, Zahir Khan made seven, and the Indian innings uh, was uh, declared by Mahendra Singh Dhoni at 521 for eight, uh, giving a real crack for the Indian spinners at the English batsman. As far as the bowling figures were concerned, James Anderson, 27 over seven maidens, one for 75, Broad, 24 overs, one maiden, none for 97, and Reston, 19 overs, two maidens, none for 73. But Graham Swan took one wicket and got a five wicket haul. 51 overs, 8 maidens, 144 runs and 5 wickets. Uh, this is a point that I, I definitely uh, wanted to mention. I actually missed mentioning that yesterday. Graham Swan now, uh, with the wickets that he has taken, uh, he, he's the, uh, he's the, uh, he has actually surpassed Jim Lake or the right arm off spinner, who was one of those great spinners and one would remember he took 19 wickets in an innings uh, and that is a record for England. And Graham Swan became the first off spinner uh, to... Uh, I mean, uh, he has become the, uh, the, the English, English test off-spinner who has taken the maximum number of wickets as far as an off-spinner is concerned for England. So that's a great tribute for him. And Swan uh, really toiled very, very hard. 51 overs, 8 maidens, 144 runs, and that 5-wicket haul for him. Samit Patel, 31 overs, 3 maidens, 96 runs on 1 wicket. Kevin Peterson bowled 8 overs, 1 maiden, and he got the very good wicket of uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin. For, um, uh, for 25 runs. Now, as far as England were concerned, England were put, uh, put right on and Mahindra Singh Dhoni decided uh, that he would be attacking with spin. Uh, probably 
you know, uh, he might have watched uh, Mushfiqur Rahim do it to Mushfiqur Rahim of Bangladesh when he did it to Western. Well, my mother Singh Dhoni has always experimented that. He has always got lots of confidence on Ravi Chandran Ashwin. And instead of giving the new ball to Zahir Khan, he actually handed the ball over to Ravi Chandran Ashwin, the Radha Mafi. And the Radha Mafi immediately responded by, uh, I mean, uh, he, I mean, there, there was uh, uh, the, the initial partnership, the opening partnership yielded 26 runs. Alistair Cook was looking good, but Nick Compton uh, was also uh, safely negotiating the spin, uh, the spin bowling. At the other end, it was Zahir Khan who was bowling. But uh, Nick Compton, uh, after being at the crease for quite a long time uh, in his first match, making his debut, uh, in fact, uh, had to be dismissed. And that was a beautiful ball from Ashwin which went in through the gate and disturbed Nick Compton's stumps. And Nick Compton was bowled by Ashwin for 9. So that was the first wicket to go. In fact, he, he, he took 53 balls to make 9 runs without any boundaries and he was gone. So 26 for 1 England and that soon uh, became 29 for 2 as Pragya Anoja came in. As night watchman James Anderson was sent in but there was absolutely no use because James Anderson uh, got an edge uh, to a ball from Oja. Uh, forward shot like Gambhir held the catch and he was gone for 2. And after that, Jonathan Trott uh, was gone as Ashwin once again came in. And this time, uh, Chateshwar Pujara had forward shot like taking a good catch of bowling of Ashwin for a duck. So Jonathan Trott was out for a duck and England were really, really struggling at that stage of 30 for 3. But Alistair Cook with an unbeaten 22 to his name with 4 fours. Kevin Peterson not out on 6 uh, with one boundary uh, took them towards the close of play on the second day at the Montreal Stadium in Ahmedabad. With England 41 for 3, the first target is going to be 321, looks very, very far away. Uh, but uh, Kevin Pearson, as you know, is a good player of spin. They still have Ian Bell, another good player of spin to come. Uh, Matt Pryor, um, uh, in fact, uh, Matt Pryor is also a good player. So one has to wait and watch. But uh, I think it is going to be very tough because already uh, the spinners have already started uh, picking up the wickets. Three wickets to go and all three wickets going to the spinners. Ravi Chandran Ashwin, eight overs, one maiden. 2 for 21, Zahir Khan bowled 5 overs, 3 maidens, none for 6. Pragyan Oja, 4 overs, 1 maiden, 3 runs on 1 wicket, the left arm spinner. Yuvraj Singh bowled 1 over for 9 runs. And I think England have a very, very tough task on the third day. They have to really, really uh, be very equal to the task. In fact, if you, if you see, there are mountains of runs to get, 480 runs more uh, for England to get. But again, one has to really, really concentrate on one thing and that would be England would be definitely looking at 321 because that is the one which will allow them to avoid the follow on. But again, as right now, even the, uh, that, that, took, uh, that is looking uh, a bit very far off. But unless and until Kevin Peterson uh, and Alistair Cook uh, really put up a long partnership tomorrow and then Ian Bell, uh, um, uh, Samit Patel with his uh, current form and Matt Pryor chip in. But uh, I think it is going to be a very, very tough task for them. Uh, they have to really, really negotiate uh, the spinners of Ichan Rashman and Pragya Noja well. And let me tell you, Zahir Khan is also capable of giving, uh, I mean, uh, he's also capable, I mean, he, as you know, he is also capable of taking lots of wickets. But, um, but, but one has to wait and watch how things pan out. But England are really, really struggling at 41 for 3 in reply to England's, uh, India's uh, mammoth total of 521 for 8 declared. But Chateshwar Pujara, as I said, uh, really, really uh, played superbly with an unbeaten 206 to his name with 21 fours, 389 balls is what he occupied uh, to get those 206 runs. But as I said, he is looking an absolutely technically proficient batsman. And uh, right now I wouldn't be able to say whether he is the, he's the perfect replacement. Uh, one has to really, really watch him uh, do, uh, do good on wickets abroad. And that is the time I would say that he is the real replacement for Rahul Dravid. Now let me change the focus here. We go to the next match. As I was telling you yesterday that Bangladesh were just uh, runs away from getting to the highest uh, ever score in Test cricket. They have never scored 500 in Test cricket, but yesterday Bangladesh did. They were 556 all out and it was thanks to Nasir Hussain who was another batsman from Bangladesh who actually missed his century. In fact, it was very sorry to see Nasir Hussain missing his maiden ton. He made 96 runs uh, with six fours and four sixes. In fact, uh, he played very, very well. He really, really merited a century, um, but unfortunately it was not to be. But Mahmudullah also contributed in good measure, making 62 with six fours and one six. And after that, uh, it was um, there was nothing that uh, Bangladesh could do. In fact, Bangladesh 
they, they wound up at 556. Rashadat Hussain out for 13. Sulin Nair picking up uh, the uh, balance wickets there. And 556 all out was the score that England put, uh, Bangladesh put up. This is their highest ever total in Test cricket. And this is the first ever 500 total that Bangladesh has ever put in Test cricket. And that would uh, really, really boost their confidence. No, no end. Ram Paul 3 for 118. 2 for 83 for Sami. Uh, 3 for 148 for Sunil Nareen. As far as the West Indies innings were concerned, in fact, they, con they, they considered West Indies considering a lead of 29 runs. They started off with Chris Gale and Kiran Powell. And once again, Sohak Ghazi, the Nadamo spinner, was given a ball. But this time, Gale's wicket was taken by Rubel Hussain, who actually took two wickets. Uh, in fact, uh, the first wicket to go was Chris Gale, who was caught behind the ball of Rubel Hussain for 19, with 1 4 and 1 6. And after that, it was a real grind for the uh, the Bangladeshi bowlers, because the Bangladeshi bowlers couldn't penetrate into the West Indies, uh, into the, uh, penetrate uh, to, to get the West Indies wickets. But Kiran Powell and Darren Bravo put up a very, very huge stand. In fact, uh, the score, um, it was a very, very huge stand. So it, it yielded 100 and, um, uh, 190, 189 runs partnership for the second wicket. And Bangladesh were really, really, uh, really had to work hard. Darren Bravo was unleashing all those. Um, a stroke that he's capable of. He's a very classic batsman. He plays in the brand Lara mold, and that's what he did precisely. He drove well. Uh, he uh, he was uh, also punching the ball very well, and also Kiran Powell at the other end. Uh, he went on to become uh, the. In fact, he got back-to-back uh, -back centuries. In fact, um, he's the, become the eighth West Indian cricketer uh, to get back-to-back uh, -back centuries in the same Test match, and he scored a century, as you know, in the previous Test. Uh, sorry, in the previous innings and in the second innings too, Kiran Powell went on to make 110 runs. And I think uh, he's one of those uh, very, very technically perfect uh, um, uh, players as far as Kiran Powell is concerned. He played some very, very handsome strokes. And uh, when, he, when he plays, uh, it is really very, very good to watch Kiran Powell. His timing is absolutely superb. And he contributed 110 runs in that partnership with 12 fours and 1 six. And that was the only uh, the shining thing that West Indies had because uh, what happened was later on, uh, later on, uh, later on what happened was uh, West, uh, from f the, the score was taken to from 20 to 209, and that was the time uh, that the partnership was broken with Bravo gone for 76 uh, with 10 fours. But suddenly after that, the West Indies innings totally disintegrated because there were four wickets which fell after that and that was all uh, due to the spinners coming in and picking up the wickets. In fact, uh, Shakib Hassan picked up the wicket of, uh, first he picked up the wicket of Marlon Samuels. He was, it was Sohek Ghezi, uh, the right arm off spinner actually picked up the wicket of uh, Marlon Samuels. We were caught by Shari and Nafiz for one. Uh, after that, the next to go was Kiran Powell. After making 110, following his partner Darren Bravo, was caught behind the bowling of Shakib Hassan. As I said, spinners came in and totally made this West Indies innings disintegrate from 209 for 2 and they finished at a close of play at 244 for 6 because Dinesh Ramadan was LBW to Hassan for 5 Darren Sami was not out on 15 with 1 4 and 1 6 at the close of play and Veer Sami Permal was consumed of the last ball of the set of the fourth day by Sohak Ghazi as he was clean bowled for 10 and West Indies finished with 244 for 6 Sohak Ghazi uh, once again impressed, 18.5 overs, 2 minutes, 2.63. Rubel sent 14 overs, 4 minutes, 2 for 35. Uh, Balled in an excellent line and length and picked up the wickets. And 2 for 56 for Shaq Willison with 11 overs and 2 maidens. But what I would like to tell you here, dear fans, is that this match has become interesting for the fifth day. Because 215 runs is what uh, uh, West Indies lead with right now. And uh, as you know, uh, the last day could be a bit dicey because the spinners could uh, turn the turn the ball. And for I, I wouldn't say that Bangladesh, should, uh, but it all depends. With Bangladesh, if they are going to, if um, or if they are going to um, get the batsman out before lunch, then probably Bangladesh will have a target. But again, Bangladesh also have to watch out because Sunil Nareen uh, could be dangerous on turning tracks. So, but uh, well, uh, what what it has done is uh, because of West Indies uh, really really collapsing. What it has done is it has made the match a bit interesting. And the fifth and final day, I'm sure the spectators uh, could be coming in uh, and trying to watch this particular match because it has become a bit interesting. Well, that's it from me, uh, your host Ram, for the cricket show for today. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.